Hi everyone and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. This channel is dedicated to pool related topics. My name is Adam and today I'm going to be demonstrating to you the differences between clean and dirty pool balls and how they react differently on the table. So without further ado, let's get started. The equipment I'll be using during this video will be the Aramith Tournament Pro Cup Pool Balls. The polish used to clean the balls will be the Aramith branded ball cleaner. And since ball cleaning machines can cost hundreds of dollars, I made one myself for under 50 bucks using a five gallon bucket and a car buffer that's flipped upside down. I made this one seven years ago and it still works perfectly to this day. Here's an up close comparison of how dirty and clean balls can look. On the left, you'll see a dirty object ball and cue ball with small smudges caused by the table, my hands, and my cue stick during normal play. They also have a hazy reflection. But on the right, you won't notice any smudges and there is a crystal clear reflection since they were just cleaned moments before recording this footage. Before I show you the first example, I want to tell you that I am not using any left or right English so I can eliminate as much human error as possible. I am aligning the stripe in the direction of aim so you can clearly tell that no English is used and the differences are a result of the ball's cleanliness alone. I try my best to keep the shot speeds consistent. Now to begin with our first example. The differences of kick shots at steep angles are small. I began here showing a simple one rail kick and making contact with the object ball using both clean and dirty balls. The differences of kick shots at shallow angles are also small. I am showing here a simple one rail kick and making contact with the object ball with both the clean and dirty balls. Kick shots close to the 45 degree angle result in the greatest differences. In this example, the dirty ball fell way short of its target. But the clean ball went too long and past the target. The difference is even greater as you increase the number of rails and the distance the ball has to travel. In this example, the dirty ball hits its target, but the clean ball goes way long and doesn't even come close. Now let's see what happens in slow motion. When the dirty ball rebounds off the rail, its top spin quickly gets changed to the direction of the rebound angle, thanks to the increased friction from the layer of dirt and chalk on the ball. But the clean ball maintains its top spin longer and slips or bows off line, making it go wide. Pockets play smaller or tougher when trying to make a dirty ball. The dirty ball rattled and was quickly ejected from the pocket. But the clean ball fell even though both balls hit the same part of the pocket. The thin layer of chalk, dust, and oils from our skin that accumulate on the ball allows greater traction on the rails. 
the dirty ball was able to spin back towards the target, but the clean ball lacks the traction on the rail to spin back toward the target. In this example, I am using extreme right English while aiming at the left side of the table. The setup for this shot is trying to cut the ball down the rail without scratching in the side pocket. I am using a striped ball as my cue ball to clearly show there is no English being used. I am also using a sentinel ball near the corner pocket to make sure I cannot cheat the pocket on either shot. In this example, the tangent line for the cue ball heads straight towards the side pocket, but since the dirty ball has more traction on the cloth, the topspin drives it off the tangent line sooner and avoids the scratch. But the clean ball will follow the tangent line longer and it cannot avoid the scratch. The next few shots will be dealing with cut-induced throw. If you are not sure what this is, please visit the link below for a great resource that covers it in depth. It is obvious that there is no cut-induced throw when you hit a ball or combo along the line of centers, but I included it anyway just so we can see that both shots end up in the pocket. Cut-induced throw is greater on dirty balls since there is more friction at the contact point, and this is what caused the dirty ball to miss the pocket. There is still cut-induced throw on clean balls, but it is less. Remember how the dirty ball missed the pocket from cut-induced throw? Did you know you can still make the shot by simply increasing the speed? Faster speed means less cut-induced throw. This is the same setup as before, but the dirty ball is able to be pocketed with ease. Thanks for watching my video. There are still more differences I'd like to cover in a future video, like how draw, follow, and masse shots are different with clean and dirty balls. If this is something you'd like to see, or if you have another topic you'd like to see me tackle, please let me know. I want to thank Dr. Dave for his support as I try to make useful videos that can help any passionate pool player. Until my next video, I hope you shoot well and have fun.